Hello. Okay, good. It went through this time. This is an impromptu live stream because it's just simpler than trying to make a video and edit it. So I, what I'm doing is introducing our Christmas block of the week. And I looked around and found some wonderful free patterns. And today the free patterns are from Kathy at Wombat Quilts. And I've included in the information the her site. And please let her know how much we appreciate her generosity in sharing her own pattern. So these are the blocks that I've chosen for this Christmas quilt. And when you write me at our time to quilt at twc.com, I can send you the grayed out blocks so that you can color them and try different combinations of Christmas fabrics. So let me first show you the fabrics I've chosen. Right here, uh, this is going to be my background for the blocks. It's really, really pretty. And then I've got three tealy blues. I've got three Christmas reds. And I've got three fun greens. And how I chose my fabrics was from this wonderful, wonderful fabric that I got. And so I then chose all of those picking lights and darks as I needed to try to get the right feeling for this quilt. Our first block is going to be Alan's Snowball. And I'm using the snowball shape as a theme for these blocks. So that, that helped direct me to what blocks I was going to pick for this quilt. And here I've already made half of the block. And you can see that I didn't pick just traditional Christmas colors. I wanted this to have some fun to it. So feel free to use Christmas fabrics or just to use any kind of fun fabrics in your stash. All right, so now that I've shown you this, and if you write to me, the address is in the in directions and information. I will be glad to share the paper piece patterns for you. For this one, you would need to make four copies of this pattern. Now, what you have to make sure to do is to check your printer settings and print, make sure it's on, it's not on print to fit. Have it, have that unclicked so you know you can get the right size here. If you don't know how to do that with your printer, then make sure you print all of these on the same printer so that they will all fit. Okay? So, so this is Ellen's Snowbox. It's the first one we're going to make. And I have it ready. And see, I played around with this and tried to come up with different ideas, I thought, for color, for fabric and color placement. So I will be glad to send that to you. Let me move some of these just a little bit and get my iron here. One thing I do, I really like doing, is I like setting up the, I like setting up the iron so that I press after every step of the way. All right. So let me now get started. We'll come back to my machine here. All right. Here we go. Okay. So I've got a small cutting mat handy. I've got my add a quarter rulers. Now, if you don't have them, just any straight edge will do. Most of the time, I just use this one. But the add a quarter reminds you to leave a quarter of an inch. I've got the pieces of fabric needed to make the blocks. Okay, and I kind of 
pre pre tore cut them into the approximate sizes. So these are the fabrics that I'm going to need. All right. Now, then I have the pattern pieces. And what I was going to share with you about this is that I take these and I, I figure out... I figure out what colors I want to put where. And on a pattern like this, it's kind of hard to figure out what end is what. This is the point in the center of all eight pieces. And this is the outside edge here. So once I can figure that out, then what I do is I write down. I find a name for the fabrics and I write them down. Okay, some are just shiny red, some are curly blue, matte red, just whatever comes to mind that I will know. Yes, hi, Vicki. This is just an impromptu because it would be easier than making a video and, um, and then having to edit it. So I wanted to let everybody know to get started on this Christmas block of the month. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this pattern piece, and this is what they call a bone folder, just made of plastic. And I take this and I fold it on each and every line and just fold it well. Now, the reason I do this is for two reasons, actually, because it makes it easier to remove the paper when you're all done putting the blocks together. And don't forget, you don't take the paper off until all the sides are sewn down in some form. So, because that helps stabilize it. When you do paper piecing, you never know what edge is going to be on the bias. So by keeping the paper on until the last minute, you're sure not to stretch it. Okay, so see how I've done this? The other reason is because you place your fabric on the back side, the non-printed side, then you can see exactly where to make your placements. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking this pattern piece, and I love a glue stick, and I'm just going to put glue where the first piece of fabric goes. I only do this with the first piece because it makes it so easy to keep that fabric in place and then you don't have to have pins or anything. Okay, so now I fold it back on the first line and you can take your add a quarter ruler and just bump it up against that folded paper where you folded it back on the line and then you take and make a cut along here and you can also I'm going to put it right on the correct line here I'm going to trim this side too just to make it neat and tidy as I go all right and you you see how that you want to have a quarter of an inch around this. This is the line you're going to sew the different blocks together. So here we go. All right. So now I've got the first piece there. And by folding this back and trimming it, I know exactly where to put my second piece. My second piece is going to be a really pretty teal that I'm going to you put right sides together. You've already trimmed that, so you know to just lay it here. And then I pick you if you if you're new to this or uncomfortable, you can put a pin somewhere outside your sewing line. Then I bring it to the machine. I turn it over to the paper section. I make sure that my sewing machine is set on a small stitch. A 1.9 is what I'm using now. I start sewing out in the margin. And I sew perfectly along the line and continue off into this margin. 
So I start early and I finish late. All right. So now I've gotten this sewn. And I'm going to just take and finger press it back. I'm going to get the iron. I really do like keeping this nice and neat while I'm sewing. Okay, so now that I've got that piece on, I'm going to fold this back. And I'm going to come in here and trim it again. Okay. Here, I have to go a quarter of an inch off of this, the sewing line on this. And here you bump it up against that fold. And there you go. All right. So now I'm ready for my next piece. And here we go. I'm glad to see you, Vicki. So now I'm going to take my next piece, line it with that line, and then turn it over, making sure that the fabric is in place. And then I'm going to sew along this line. Okay. Now, the thing I wanted to do with... And you always, oh, another way to make sure if it's going, if you've got it placed right and if it's going to work is to fold the fabric back and make sure that shape will fit in the piece of fabric that you cut. All right, let me get this pressed. But if you will just give the time a few minutes each week to make the block, the best part is that in sometime in November, you will have a 12 blocks enough to make a wonderful Christmas top for your holiday. So, all right. But I just thought, let's try a block of the week. Because sometimes just saying, oh, we're going to do a Christmas quilt can be a little overwhelming. But if you're just making one block a week, how easy is that? So now it says pick matte red, and this is what I've labeled my matte red. And I'm going to put it right here, line it up here, flip it over. And you definitely want to stitch with a shorter stitch, because when you peel off that paper, you don't want to mess up your seams. So, okay. So now I I press every step. I've right, got the iron right here beside me. All right, I'm going to fold on this line and then cut this excess off. All right. Now, a piece like this, I'll save for my crumb pile because I am working on a crumb quilt as well. All right, and then I'll put it here and cut that off. All right. So now I'm, I've come this far, and you can see it goes along pretty quick. As long as you know the fabrics that you're using, it, it works, along, works out pretty good. All right, so I'm going to place this one here, flip it over, and make sure that's going to... And don't forget, you can always fold that paper back to make sure, yes, the pick piece you pick is going to fit. Oh, hi, Jeannie. I, I was telling Vicki that I was going to make a video, but I said, oh, I hate editing a video. So I thought, well, if I do a real quick little live, I can probably get, get on, get this done, and then not have to worry about editing. So... I can't hear very well today, but I had to stop taking the decongestant. I was taking a small dose, but I had been taking it for a couple of weeks because I can't hear well. I've, my head's kind of blocked up. Well, unfortunately, it made me feel really awful yesterday. So Mark said, that's it. Stop taking it. Give yourself a break. So that's what I'm doing. Now I need the curly, curly blue fabric. And so I'm trying to give some good instructions for a brand new Christmas block of the week. And I didn't want people to get a late start. So I thought, well, just since I didn't get to have a show yesterday, I'll come on here today. Hi, Laura. 
<laughs> this is right now. I'm sorry I surprised you. And uh, I wanted to get this Christmas block started. So as soon as I finish this block, I'll catch you back up. All right. Let me get this in place to sew this where I need it. Oh, okay, yes. I, I figured that I just can't keep taking the decongestants. They were just making me feel terrible. And so I'm pro I've am i got a doctor's appointment coming up. And if I don't go before, then when I go then, I'll say, Help, I cannot get this congestion out of my head. So here I go. And it's only in my inner ear, so I had an a ENT, an ear, nose, and throat doctor tell me I had incompetent eustachian tubes. I was like, really? <laughs> so, but yesterday, I, I, when I decided I just wasn't up to doing the live stream, I went out and got in my hammock, and boy, was that wonderful. And I felt much better after resting for a while in the hammock. But I think mainly it's this decongestant that kind of overwhelmed me. All right. Whoops. You're not. Let me pull this back. I'm sorry. I don't mean you not to be able to see what I'm doing. So, okay. So the next piece is a piece of shiny red. I call it shiny red because isn't that pretty? This is a fabric that I got to use for my strawberry quilt. Okay, and I'll fold this back like this to make sure it's going to fit. See how I do that? Because there's nothing worse than sewing a piece of fabric on and the dumb thing doesn't fit. Okay. So, hello. And I, this, I got the idea for these blocks from Wombat Quilts, and um, I wrote her an email to get her permission, even though they're free patterns. I like to be respectful. I haven't heard back, and I'm not really sure if her website is still manned, but if you w could leave her a little thank you, I always appreciate, I always appreciate people who share their talent and she's very talented to have written all these so now i just got one eighth of the block done and this is this is the first block and you know don't worry if the blocks look hard paper piecing makes it so easy so here it is and i will gladly send you to those of you who belong to our group i'll put them on the site tonight those of you who don't belong to our group SIO, just email me at ourtimetoquilt at twc.com. It's in the information down below. And I will send you the pattern. These that are wonderful so you can color and try. These are the blocks we're going to make, 12 blocks. And that way you can color them in and get an idea of where to put your fabric. And as I was telling people earlier, it's hard to look at this paper piece and figure out where it's going to end up in the block. So I took and wrote the names of the fabrics and where they should be placed. That way I don't have to stress over it. So also I, I fold and crease every line, sewing line on this. All right, so now... Let's go back down. Oh, brain unremarkable. <laughs> I have learned after having cancer that unremarkable is a wonderful thing. <laughs> oh, I never thought being normal would feel so good. All right. So now I'm taking this one real quickly and I'm folding on the sewing line. And I like using this bone folder, which is just a piece of plastic. It's wonderful for turning edges. And, uh, oh, I forgot to take a picture. I finished my granddaughter's 
dress and I forgot to take a picture of it. I'll get my daughter to take a picture. But I ended up putting a zipper in the front. I, I figured out how to put a zipper in, even though it's not on the in, on the center seam, like it, the pattern planned for. And I think it's going to be really cute. So they are hemming it and putting the buttons on. And I will make sure I show you. All right. But my daughter and I went up and took a little trip up to Pilot Mountain area. And um, if any of you watched Andy Griffith, they called it Mount Pilot. So now I have, the reason I fold on all these lines, it makes it easier to tear when I'm done sewing the block together, the, all the blocks together. But also look at this. Since you have to place your fabrics on the unprinted side, it shows you the lines of where they should be. Just a little extra help, okay? All right. And I'm doing, let me see. All right. I already have this much of this block. Whoops. This much of this block already made. And now I'm making the last piece that will go right here. And I'll show you what this comes out to look like. Boy, it's so good to see you. I was trying to sneak on and sneak off. But it is always so good to see you guys. I missed you yesterday. My head was hurting. My eyeballs even hurt. <laughs> so I said, I can't do it. And I hate to do that on our, on our Sunday show. Because, you know, I want you to be able to count on me being here. But sometimes it just... Whew, this fabric I cut a little tight. So... Okay, I have to make sure that the fabric goes off, color goes beyond the dark lines. As long as it goes beyond the dark lines, I'm okay. All right, so now I'm going to get this ruler and come trim this up. I love having a little rotary mat so I don't have to go to my larger mat to trim this up. Whoops, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to put this on the line here and show them. okay you need a quarter of an inch belong beyond the sewing line this is the sewing line so these patterns have that quarter of an inch built in all right trim this now i'll come in and trim the next line where i'm going to sew which is in between this first piece and where i'm going to put the second piece and I butt this little quarter of an inch ruler up against that paper fold. And then I can easily remove this. Now, when I go in to put the next piece, which is this pretty piece, I know exactly where to put it because I've already trimmed this. So I place this here. And this is a little close to, let me make sure, yeah, when I fold it, it'll be fine. So I just bring it over to the machine and stitch along the solid line. And I start early and finish late just to make sure that it's not going to come undone. And I shorten my stitch length down to 1.9 or 1.8. Because when you start yanking off those papers, it's going to be... It'll really stress the stitches, so you want them small so that it stays nice and tight. All right. Trim that right there. And now, you see, I've got, and this is how fast and easy. It's just a process, which I love. All right. And you see how I've gone past the dark markings. I'm in the seam allowance. Now, if I was worried, since that's a wee bit short in the seam allowance, all I have to do is stitch just to this side of the line to make sure all the fabric stays right where it's supposed to stay. All right. So now my next piece is this cute little green, lime green polka dot. 
Christmas greens can, or Christmas colors can be pretty much anything. Lime green is just as good as a dark green. And you can go to your fabric stash and pick out whatever fabric makes you happy. And this is the perfect quilt for shopping your stash because with any time you use these blocks like this, you can take a little, you know, each block can be different. So that's a wonderful way to use up your scraps, to use up fat quarters. The only thing you are you might want to think about is what are you going to use for your um what are you going to use for your sashing and your borders? And that's where this pulls all my colors together. So look in your stash and see what you've got. Okay, Matt ran over here. Okay, let's see. I'm not sure that will not fit. I might. Let me see. Ooh, this. I think this is a little too close. Yeah, I'd have to put it this way. That won't work. So let me grab another piece. Like I said, sometimes I cut it too close. And I don't worry about being so careful with your fabric that you make it hard on yourself. It's okay if you waste a little fabric. Now that I have come to love crumb quilting, it's never a waste to me. It's all good stuff. All right. Only got a couple little pieces left. Then I can get this last block. I'm going to show you how to put the, the panels together. Very, very easy. It's a method I learned watching Alex Anderson back in her HGTV days. All right. Trim that off. And it's really good to have a little trash can right below where you're sewing. Because I don't know if you can see it. See that? That comes in very handy, and everything can go in the trash. Whoops, I didn't quite trim this short enough. Supposed to be a quarter of an inch from the dark line. Okay. All right. Now, this one says shiny red. I've got my shiny red piece right here. Place this on. Stitch it in place. Hello. Hi, Mimi. Welcome here. I'm doing um, an unusual show tonight. I didn't have my yesterday show, but I wanted people to be able to start on the Christmas block of the week we have. And why are we doing a block of the week? Because... The thought of doing a full quilt is a little intimidating. And by just doing a block of the week, then you feel like, oh, anybody can do a block. Whoops. Let me put it on this side. <laughs> and what I was doing is I place it up along this line. I fold this paper back to make sure that I've got fabric all around that area. And then I come over and sew it. But I feel like if you can give a little bit of time to sew one block a week, in 12 weeks, we will have a Christmas quilt. And even if you just have the floppy and you quilt it later, you'll have something new and fun for Christmas. And I always like that. You know, I have all my traditional decorations that don't change from year to year. But then there are times I really like having something new. All right, I'll fold back on this line. That, oh, come on. Sometimes you know how you sew early and sew long? So sometimes you have to just rip up that edge where it's sewn down. Carol Doak used to say, I am woman, hear me roar, to help women remember 
to just grab it and pull and it works just fine all right my last one a dark red all right so here's my dark red i'll put it on right here okay come over here okay now let me pro oh, oh see that little problem hold on so if this happens to you you have to be careful because you have to be careful because your stitches are small and you don't want to rip the fabric but i'm just going to come along here and try to carefully pull cut pull cut to take this off and to put it in a better position because when i folded it up look what happened so i'm going to turn it around and do it again and this is what i mean to me it is worth my time to make sure the fabric is big enough so i don't you know pulling out these stitches takes too long so you know how impatient i am all right almost done but the thing I love about this, it doesn't matter how complex the paper piecing is because the block might look really complex. But with paper piecing, it is like paint by number. It is easy peasy and everybody, you can do this without even thinking about it. So now this time, let me see if I plate. No, nope, that's probably the same way I did it before. I'll put it this way. And then I'm going to do something real quick. Hold on. If you do what I did by taking out the stitches, you tear the paper a little bit. On this outside, put just a little piece of tape to hold it in place until you get the... Oh, you still have it. Oh, you have the gingerbread man I sent you. Oh, that's wonderful. So now let me see. If I place this here... Then I'm going to fold it over on the line and see that, yes, it will fit this way. So this is, this is the way I want to stitch it. But if you're like me, you hate taking that time to take those stitches out and do it again. So when you're doing it, just try to double check that it's going to work. And now that works. So I'm going to come over and press it. I love pressing it really good. Then I get my ruler. And let's say if you don't have an add a quarter ruler, then you can just use this ruler, line it up a quarter of an inch away from that line. So let's put it right along here. Okay, and trim that up. Then come up here. and trim this up all right and i like to trim across the edge there all right so now we have the block all right so here's the other block we just got through making and what i'm going to do is put these two together and get ready to put it into the block all right, so you see that didn't take that long. I don't know how, let me see. It, you know, all together, this one is a complicated block, so it may take, this one may take about an hour of your time, but some of these will be a lot simpler. All right, this is how you sew them together, okay? You ready for this? You. This is a method I learned from Alex Anderson. Anytime you want to get perfect placement, of any of your seams you take a pin and stick it straight through the end of this one right there put it right in the end and then come out and put it right here through the end of this this one right here there you go all right and you hold it you push the fabrics together and you hold it like that and then you come and put a pin back here, okay? 
Now, once you've got this pin here, you can take that pin, stick it through this junction and through the corresponding junction on the paper behind it. Make sure that the pins, see how the pin stays straight? Then you know, because if it's bent like this, then it means those seams are off. But when it's straight up and down, come put a pin right back here. Okay. Now I'm going to take this pin, put it right through that junction. And this seems like a lot of work. But like I said, if you don't have to take a, these tiny seams out, then you're ahead of the game. So I just move my way down each juncture. And here... This one has to come right up, right up at this, at this point. It goes in at that point. And making sure that the needle is perpendicular, nice and straight, then I can come and pin it. So I have one more intersection, and I put it right here for this one come through right there at that one. Okay, make sure the pin is straight and put a pin in here. Then I remove that one and I stitch. Stitch right on that solid line. And, you know, it takes some good sewing machine power because some of those junctions have quite a few layers of fabric built up at them. And sorry I didn't let you know I was doing this. This was just an easier thing for me to do rather than trying to videotape it. And what I like to do with all these layers is if I can, I like to press finger press open the seams. Normally, I don't press seams unless it's a very bulky place. But if you look at all these different fabrics and the seams, you'll see that that's really bulky. So I, I will come with the iron and iron the finger press seam opening. Then I'll flip it over and give it a real good press here. And please notice how beautifully all of the seams line up. And that's just from that magical pinning method. So I'm going to quickly do that right here. So I want it, I want to get this finished really quickly. And you just have to make sure that these corners line up perfectly. All right. And then, and I would I would definitely do that that uh, sticking the straight pin in. Right now I'm in a big hurry, but it really works beautifully. All right, so now these two blocks are put together. I need to sew up this seam. Then I'll have now this will make one half of the block. I already have the other half sewed together. So once I put these two long straight edges, I'll have the whole block. Okay. Remember he Helen Reddy? Uh-oh, did she pass? I know Ed Asner passed yesterday. He seemed like such a awesome man. So here is the half of the block. I'm going to quickly put this, do finger pressing to get the seam open. And all right. Now I'm going to go to the iron and get this done. Okay. It's so exciting. I didn't plan on, on seeing anyone. But it's awfully exciting to see you. I missed y'all yesterday. I really did. All right. So here's half of the quilt. And one thing I love about this block is using different values and tones to make it. I want this star to sparkle. So 
It's been good seeing you here. Take care, Miss Jeannie. So now I'm going to sew the two of these together. And then we'll have our first block done. And I will make sure to have these blocks done before you try them so that if there are any tricky places that I need to warn you about, I can. Okay, I'm lining up everything very carefully. All right, let's see. And this won't take long. Then I will show you the finale. I love activities where if I just do a little bit at a time, I end up with a great reward. And that's what I want this quilt to be for you. Okay, come back over to the sewing machine. And the last stitching for this block. And I love these blocks because they have snowball centers. Most of them do. And they're all stars. So, you know, I love that. Stars are, are my favorite traditional block. And it just looked like a fun pattern to be able to do something that's just a little bit of a surprise. All right. Now I'm just going to finger press this open very carefully so that when I go over to the iron, it's much easier to iron it. And if you don't want to use your finger, then just come in here with this, this paper bone folder, push things apart, and put them down. All right, let me give this a press, and then I will show you the finished block. Okay. Oh, this is beautiful. I think you will like it. It might not be your Christmas colors, and that's absolutely fine, because you get to pick whatever you want. Okay. Here. Here we go. Here is our very first Christmas block. Isn't that fun? Oh, thank you. This is my once of a year time that I'm able to have fingernails, so I'm enjoying it. <laughs> but isn't that sweet? So this is called Ellen Snowball. It's a 12-inch block. It is from Wombat Designs. She's out of Australia. And... I will be glad to send you the patterns and these coloring sheets. And what I did is remove the color and made them faint as I could so that you can come in and you can try different fabrics for your blocks. Okay? So, I think it, I think it is definitely worth making. When you get this pattern, you will need to print four of these sheets of paper so that you then can make the block. And as you see, I think it's a winner. And I tried to add some whimsy to this with the polka dots and the bright colors. Just a little twist on Christmas. All right, and then just to show you, I'm going to use this wonderful fabric for my sashing and for the border. And that's where I got my, my color palette. I looked at this and said, oh, that's, that's wonderful. And I love striped fabric. All right, guys. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Any questions? I know I didn't expect myself today. I was going to just do a video to start you on the step one of the Christmas block. But then I thought, it's so much easier to do a live stream. I'll sneak in and do one, and they'll have it. So all the information is in the description, and even my email where you can ask for the blocks. And I'm going to go ahead and skip out of here, and we'll be back to it. We've got our one more Thursday night show coming up.
And then wait till you see what I'm working on and what some of you, other of you, because I have your pictures. And then we'll go back to Sunday. And I've got so much fun stuff to share with you, including the marbling. So, all right. I will let you go now. But maybe you can raise your stash and participate this with us. If you do one block a week, you're going to have a top for Christmas. Okay? All right. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling much better. My, I can't hear well, but I, I'm not taking the decongestants until I talk to my doctor. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>